Hi. In this video, we are going to start a new section in our Maths Olympiad course. Uh, this is about functional equations. So we'll look at some problems and learn some techniques of solving functional equations problems. And this is part one of the video. We'll look at a few questions today. And in the next video, we'll look at more techniques and tricks to solve these kinds of problems. Let's just begin. We have the first question is this one. Uh, let the domain of f of x domain of f of x be real positive and f of x satisfies this equation 3 times f of x plus 2 times f of 1 by x is equal to 4x. We have to basically find the function, find f of x. So many times in functional equations problems, you have questions like these where the idea is if you want to find f of x, you should treat f of x as an unknown. Here we have another unknown f of 1 by x. So if we can make, we have one equation and two unknowns, right? We have one unknown is f of x and one unknown is f of 1 by x. So if we get another equation where we have the same two unknowns, then we can use the techniques of simple equations and solve for f of x. Basically by eliminating f of 1 by x. Right, that's a pretty standard technique, and this is fairly easy because of that. So, <clears throat> here if we replace x with 1 by x, we'll get the equation 3 times f of 1 by x plus 2 times f of x is equal to 4 by x. So, you can see now that we have one equation here, one equation here, and both of these equations have f of 1 by x as a variable, right? So our job is simple. It's just eliminating f of 1 by x. So how do we do that? We just multiply this equation by 2. And we multiply this equation by 3. Actually, I should eliminate f of 1 by x. So I should multiply the first equation by 3. And the second equation by 2. And then what I will get is 9 f of x plus 6 f of 1 by x is equal to 12x. And here I will get 6f of 1 by x plus 4f of x is equal to 8 by x. So when you subtract these two, you will get 5f of x is equal to 12x minus 8 by x, right? So basically from here, we can say that f of x is simply 4 by 5, 4 common, and it is 3x minus 2 by x, right? So we have solved for f of x. Now our job is you should check this f of x, whether it satisfies the functional equation or not. If you check it yourself, you will realize that it does. And therefore, this is our answer, right? So excuse me. this is a very straightforward problem. But I just wanted to show you that this is a common technique, eliminating, eliminating f of 1 by x. This kind of thing happens a lot. So we will see much more complicated problems where we might use similar techniques. So also remember that once you solve a functional equation, if you have gotten f of x, you need to once check and confirm whether it satisfies the original functional equation or not. So don't forget to do that part because sometimes you might solve and it doesn't satisfy the original equation, right? So then that is not a solution. Let's look at another one, which is slightly more complicated. Uh, this question says, that find all functions, find all functions from f from r to r such that, such that for any x, y belonging to real, for any x, y belonging to real, we have f of x plus f of y is equal to f of f of x multiplied by f of y. This is the condition that is given. Let's call this equation as 1. right? Now, in this problem, what we will first try to do is find the value of f of 0. What is f of 0, basically? right? So let's say, suppose f of 0 is equal to a. right? And let x and y be 
zero and zero in one. So in equation one, which is the standard functional equation, we put X and Y as zero and zero. What will we get? We'll get F of zero plus F of zero. And we have assumed that F of zero is A, right? So we'll get A plus A is equal to F of, F of zero into F of zero. So that is A into A, so A squared, right? So basically we are getting F of A squared is equal to 2A. This is our second result, right? Okay. Now we have a result on F of A squared. So I want to use that somehow. I want to use this new information that we have. So how do I use it? I can say, suppose X and Y are equal to A squared and A squared, right? If I put X and Y as A squared and A squared, I will get F of A squared twice of F of A squared is equal to F of F of A squared whole square, right? So that will become basically F of A squared was 2A. So this is 4A is equal to F of 2A whole square. So F of 4A squared, right? So basically what we are getting is this result F of 4A squared is equal to 4A. Let's call it the third result that we have gotten, right? Now, again, we have this information. I want to use this because only if I use known stuff, will I be able to figure out my A, right? My target right now is to find F of zero, okay? So how do I do that? Let's put X and Y as four A square and zero. X and Y as four A square and zero in this original equation. So we get F of four A square plus y is zero. So f of zero is equal to f of f of four a square multiplied by f of zero, right? Now, what does this become? f of four a square we have already gotten is four a. So this becomes four a and f of zero is already assumed as a. So four a plus a is equal to f of, this is becoming four a, right? And f of zero is again a. So this is f of four a square, right? So now we are getting f of 4a square is equal to 5a, right? Now, can you see that this fourth result, f of 4a square is equal to 5a and f of 4a square is equal to 4a, together implies that 4a is equal to 5a or a is equal to 0. So from 3 and 4, we can conclude that f of 0 is equal to 0. So we have f of zero is equal to zero. Great. So once we have f of zero is equal to zero, we will be able to use that in our equation. So let's see how we are going to use that. Let's just put y is equal to zero. Since we need to find f of x, and now we know the value of f of zero, we can just put y is equal to zero in the first equation right here. So we'll say f of x plus f of zero is equal to f of f of x into f of zero, right? So this implies that f of x, and now we know f of zero is zero, so zero is equal to f of, this is f of x multiplied by zero, which is f of zero, which is zero. So we are getting f of x is equal to zero. And since this relation was true for all x and y belonging to real, this relation is true for all x belongs to real, right? when y is zero. So for all x belongs to real, f of x is coming as zero. So that must be our solution. Now check the function, check whether this is an answer by putting it in the original functional equation. If f of x is zero, this is zero, this is zero, the left hand side is zero. And here inside is also f of zero, which is zero, right? So this definitely satisfies the original functional equation. And therefore this is our solution. Now keep in mind what we did here. We started off by trying to find f of zero and we assumed that it is a, we put zero, zero, we got f of a square as two a. We used f of a square again. We used f of a square for x and y both. And from there we got f of four a square. And now that I have f of four a square, what did I do? I put f of four a square, x as four a square and y as zero. And from there I got another equation for f of four a square, which gave us the value of a. Once you have f of zero value as zero, we can just put y is zero and x not x keeping it as unchanged, we get the f of x function. So this is a standard technique. We are putting strategically different, different values of 
parameters for x and y and then using the information that we get in each step. It is important to not put random numbers in it. Once we put 0, 0, we got this information. Then we are trying to use this information somehow, right? Do not put anything random because then you cannot connect them. You might end up getting lots of information, but you don't have a way to connect them. So we used a square, a square again. We got f of 4a square, then we used 4a square and 0 again. So we are trying to use all the information that you collect in the next previous step, right? So remember that for your problems. Let's look at the next problem. This question says that let n is greater than or equal to 2, let n greater than or equal to 2 be a given positive integer. Be a given positive integer. And suppose, suppose a function a function f from r to r from r to r satisfies for all x and y belonging to real the relation let's write this relation here f of x plus y bar n is equal to f of x plus f of y whole power n right now we have to show show that show that f of x square is equal to f of 1 to the power n minus 2 multiplied by f of x whole square for all x belongs to real so this is what we want to prove we have this functional relation and we want to show this okay so again, we'll start by taking different different values of x and y parameters and see what we get from there, right? So first step is basically, uh, let's say put x is equal to y is equal to zero in equation one. We'll call this as equation one. This is our original functional equation. So if you put that there, you will get f of zero is equal to, this side is totally zero. So is equal to f of zero plus f of 0 power n, right? Which implies that f of 0 is 0. Okay, so we have gotten f of 0 is 0. Now, second step, we can try putting just x as 0. Just x as 0 and keep y as it is. You'll get f of y power n is equal to f of 0, which is 0, plus is equal to f of y whole power n, right? So let's call this our second result f of y power n is equal to f of y whole power n, right? Okay. Now, now that we have this, I need to do something about the y power n term. So I will say, let's say, let z is equal to y power n, where z is greater than 0, right? So basically, we are saying y is equal to z power 1 by n, right? And in that case, uh, we will get the functional equation starts looking like f of x plus z is equal to f of x plus f of y is uh, f of x plus f of y whole power n. And using the second result, if you think about it, f of y whole power n is simply f of y power n. So we can write it as f of x plus f of y power n. And now we will say that f of x plus y power n is z, so f of z, right? And this is the standard equation that we are getting. f of x plus z is equal to f of x plus f of z. Now, this equation is a very famous functional equation. It's called Cauchy's functional equation. Cauchy's functional equation. Now, you can show by simple induction that whenever this equation is true, f of x plus z is equal to f of x plus f of z, then f of kx will be equal to k times f of x, right? So I will show that. So for example, we have f of x plus z is equal to f of x plus f of z, right? This is the relation we have. And this was true for z greater than 0, right? Well, if here we put here, if x is equal to minus z, right? 
if we put x is equal to minus z in this, we will get f of 0 is equal to f of minus z plus f of z. And f of 0 was 0. So you get f of z plus f of minus z is 0. Therefore, f of z is an odd function. Is an odd function. Right? So for negative z also, the function basically is odd and negative z values, the value of the function is basically negative of f of z, right? Now, uh, what we can say is for regular integers, if k belongs to natural number, if k belongs to natural number, f of kx will be equal to k times f of x. How you can check for put z is equal to x, you will get f of 2x is equal to f of x plus f of x, which is 2 times f of x. Similarly, if you put 3x, you will get f of 3x will be what? f of 2x plus x, which is equal to f of 2x plus f of x. And this is equal to 2 times f of x. So this becomes 3 times f of x. So it is pretty obvious to prove by induction that for k being an integer or k being a natural number, you have f of kx is equal to k times f of x. So I will not worry about that induction. What we can say is that even for a rational number, even for a rational number, we have, if k belongs to q set, right, which means k should be equal to p by q, even then we can show that f of basically kx will be equal to k times f of x, which is equal to p by q times f of x. Now, how do I show that? So for example, let's start by trying to write f of q times k of x, right? Why am I doing this? Because q into k will be p and p is an integer. Here, k was written as p by q, where p and q were integers. So f of q times k of x will be basically q times f of k of x, because this result is true for all integers, right? Correct. So now this stuff, can be written as f of q into k is p of x. So f of p of x is equal to p of f of x. And therefore, you have the result p of f of x is equal to q of f of kx, right? So therefore, p by q f of x is equal to f of kx. And p by q was k, right? So therefore, you have k times f of x is equal to f of kx and where k was a rational number, k was equal to p by q. So basically Cauchy's functional equation, which was this equation, gives us this condition that f of kx is equal to k times f of x, where k can be an integer or k can be a rational number. Now, why is that important? Because ultimately we have to prove something slightly weird. If you remember what we have to prove in the problem, we have to show that f of x squared is equal to f of 1 power n minus 2 multiplied by f of x whole square, right? So if you think about it carefully, this literally these two terms look like they are in a binomial expansion, right? Because the sum of the powers is n, right? So it looks like it is some sort of a binomial expansion. So we have to basically think about what we will do. How will we get this result, right? So for that, what we start off with is we'll start by writing f of x plus k power n, right? Here k belongs to q and x belongs to real, right? We'll start by trying to write this. This becomes f of, let's expand it by binomial, which is x power n plus n c1, x power n minus 1 k, and so on, so on, till n c n k power n, right? Now, since we know that f of x plus z was equal to f of x plus f of z. This was true for all rationals and all, and for all integers, right? Actually, this result was true for all real numbers. So therefore, we can easily separate it into its individual parts, right? We can write this as f of x power n plus f of n c1 x power n minus 1 k, and so on, plus f of n c n k power n, right? And if you write it like this now, you can use the fact that we had already proved that f of y power n 
is equal to f of y whole power n. We already know that. And we also know that f of kx is equal to k times f of x, as long as k is a rational number, right? So these two facts we will use now. So we'll write this here as f of x bar n plus, plus the k can come out nc1 is also a constant that can also come out nc1k f of xn minus 1 right and so on so on till here ncn k power n and this is f of 1 right so what have i done here all the terms that had x i keep that inside my function all the constant stuff you can re realize that nc1 nc2 and so on will be integers and k is a rational number so these two together is still a rational number so since for rational numbers, this result is true, which we have already said, which is true for the Cauchy's equation. Therefore, we can take it outside. We have taken it outside. We have taken all the constant terms outside and we are left with f of one here at the end, right? So this is one way to expand it, right? This is one way to expand f of x plus k whole power n. Now we do the same expansion, but in a slightly different way, right? So we'll say that f of x plus k whole power n is the same as f of x plus k whole to the power n, right? Why is that true? Because of this property. We have already shown this before that f of y power n is equal to f of y whole power n, right? Now, this can be written as f of x plus f of k whole power n, right? Why? Because f of x plus k is equal to f of x plus f of k. That is also a fact, right? So now what we do here is we just expand this as binomial theorem terms. So this starts looking like f of x whole power n plus n c1 f of x whole power n minus 1 into k times into not k into f of 1 into f of k, right, f of k, correct. And, okay, actually I will do that in the next screen because there is less space here. So let me just do this in the next screen. f of x plus k we had, and we had to raise this whole thing to the power n, right? Because we said that this was same as f of x plus k power n. So now we wrote this as f of x plus f of k, whole power n, right? We can even do one step further. We can write f of k as k times f of 1. So this becomes f of x plus k times f of 1 whole power n, right? And now we expand it as, bi as binomial terms. So we'll say f of x whole power n plus n c 1 k into f of 1 into f of x power n minus 1 plus so on, so on, till we have n c n and k power n f of 1 power n, right? This is the expansion. Now, if you think about it, we already know f of y power n is equal to f of y whole power n. So this term can be written as f of x power n, right? If you think about it, this term becomes f of x power n, right? Correct. And then this term becomes nc1k f of 1, and this becomes f of x power n minus 1, right? And the last term simply becomes ncn k power n and f of 1 power n, right? So this is the second version, second way in which we can expand the, the same term, right? And the first way, if you recall, was f of x power n, which we had done in the previous screen, plus nc1k, f of x power n minus 1, plus so on, till k power n f of 1. This was what the expansion was. When we directly expanded f of x plus k power n, x plus k power n we did. We expanded the inside part and then took the f, right? Now we are doing it in the opposite order, right? Okay, so since both the things are equal, we can compare the terms, right? We can compare the terms. 
and we get an equality. This is equal to this, right? Now, if you put, if x is a constant, if x is a constant, you will realize that both sides can be thought of as polynomials in K. Can be thought of as polynomials in K. Why? Can you see here there is a K power N and there are K terms everywhere. And if X is some constant, some real number constant, then it's a polynomial in K here, which is equal to another polynomial in K, right? Now, since the equation, this equation is supposed to hold, equation holds for all K belongs to rational number, you can say that these two poly polynomials are identical for an infinite number of rational numbers, right? These two polynomials have the same value for an infinite number of rational numbers k. So that means the polynomials must be identical because two polynomials, which are n degree polynomials, cannot be equal at more than n points. If they are equal at more than n points, then the two polynomials are identically the same. Right? If these two polynomials are identically the same, we can now compare the terms on both sides and say all the terms on both sides must match, right? So if we compare a particular term here, if we compare the coefficient of k power n minus 2 on both sides of this polynomial, basically coefficient of k power n minus 2 on both sides. So for example, on the first side here, what will be the k power n minus 2 term here, right? Think about it. It should be n c n minus 2. You should have k power n minus 2. You should have f of 1 power n minus 2. And you should have f of x squared, right? This should be the term on this side, right? And what is the term on this side? k power n minus 2 term here. It should be n c n minus 2. It should be simply k power n minus 2. And we have here f of we have f of x square, right? Uh, Okay, I will just write the two polynomials properly here. So just recapping because I seem to have forgotten the exact terms. So when we do this expansion, f of x plus k power n, this thing, right? We wrote it as f of x power n plus n c one, x power n minus one k and so on till n c n k power n. And then we split it. We wrote it as f of x power n plus n c 1 k f of x power n minus 1 plus n c n k power n. And basically it is f of 1. Right? This is what we This is what we wrote earlier. N C N K par N. N C N K par N. This is the terms first. And then we try to do it in a different way. Correct. Then we wrote it as F of X plus K whole par N, which became F of X plus K F of 1 whole par N. And here the expansion became f of x whole power n plus n c one f of x power n minus one into k f of one and so on so on till n c n this is k power n f of one power n correct so now it is coming correctly f of ones are only in this one and this one is this series right and now we compare the two terms. We have already done the rest of the argument. We can say that 
these two polynomials are equal for many rational numbers k, for infinite rational numbers k, so the polynomials must be identical. And now we are comparing the term corresponding to the coefficient of k power n minus 2. Coefficient of k power n minus 2. So here, k power n minus 2 will come somewhere here, where, where the term will be n c n minus 2, and it will be f of x power square, and it will be k power n minus 2, right? Because the powers are inside x power n, x power n minus 1, it will be n minus n minus 2, so it will be f of x square. And here, the same term will be n c n minus 2, and we will have k power n minus 2, f of 1 whole power n minus 2, and we'll have f of x whole square, right? Correct? So now, these two terms must be equal because the polynomials are identical. So we can cancel this n c n minus 2, and we can say now that we can say that f of x whole square, f of x square, right? And we can even cancel k power n minus 2. f of x square is becoming equal to f of 1 power n minus 2 and f of x whole square, right? So I got a little confused at one stage, but that was just because I had not written the two polynomials cleanly on one screen, right? So you need to think about why this is happening. The properties that we used here are, first of all, Cauchy's equation that f of x plus k is equal to f of x plus f of k. And that implies that f of kx is equal to k times f of x. And here k can be any integer. It can only be any ran rational number as well. And also we use the property f of y whole power n is equal to f of y power n. We have already proved that earlier in the beginning of the proof. This was point number two that we derived. So using these two and binomial theorem, we are able to prove this identity. So think about it. Go back to the video and try it yourself once more. And you should be able to get it. So let's move on to the next question now. Okay. This question is a type of problem that is very common in Maths Olympiads. But... I'm sure many of you don't know this technique really well. So what I want you to learn in this particular problem is proof methods. Basically, how we go about proving something. So first, let me just talk about the function. Find all functions f from r to r such that for all x, y belonging to r, we have f of x square plus y plus f of y is equal to 2y plus f of x whole square, right? Okay. Now, we have to find all the functions for which this functional equation is true, right? Now, many times in solving problems like this, you may have heard that you can guess a solution. Guessing a solution is part of the whole problem solving techniques for functional equation. So if you can guess a solution, it's good. You will be on the right track. So for example, here we can guess a solution. We can look at the function and maybe try if f of x is equal to x fits or not, right? So if f of x is equal to x, we can check it is becoming x squared plus y plus y is equal to 2y plus x squared. And it is definitely fitting, right? So we can see by inspection itself that f of x is equal to x is a solution, right? But that is not enough. In Olympiads, you will have to prove that that is the only solution or if there are no other possible solutions. So we need to show, show that f of x equal to x is the only solution, correct? So finding the solution was easy, but proving this is a little difficult. Not really difficult, but it requires some technique. So that is what I want you to learn from this problem. So what we are going to do now is prove that f of x is equal to x is the only solution. 
So how do we do that proof? We will do, a, do that in stages. So in each stage, we'll try to learn something more about the system, right? Something more about the equation. So what we'll try to do is we'll prove claim one. My claim one is that f of a is equal to zero if and only if a is zero. This is my claim one. F of A is equal to zero if and only if A is zero. Obviously, this is true if F of X is equal to X. And we want to show that this is true for the solution satisfying this functional equation. So now think about it. Uh, if I put, if I put Y is equal to minus half multiplied by F of X whole square. If I put y is equal to minus half into f of x whole square, I will make the right hand side zero, right? Right hand side zero, correct? So therefore, you will get f of something here is equal to zero, right? So what we will say is that there exists an A belonging to R such that f of a is equal to zero. This something we are calling as a, right? By putting y is equal to this, we are able to show that the function does take the value zero for some input, right? I don't know what that input is right now. It looks very complicated. You don't have to put it here, right? But there is some real number for which the function output is zero. That is what I want to establish. So there is some a for which f of a is zero, right? So what we will do now is we'll choose this A, choose this A, which A such that F of A is zero, right? And we'll say, let's say X and Y are equal to zero and A in one, right? X and Y are equal to one is my equation, functional equation. So I'm putting X is zero, Y is A in the first equation, right? So let's see what happens. It becomes f of x is 0. So it is 0 plus a plus f of a, right, is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square, right? So basically what I'm getting is since f of a is 0, I'm getting f of a is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square, right? f of a is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square, correct. And f of 0 was 0. So I'm getting 0 is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square, right? Okay. This is one step. Now, now if 0 is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square, we can even say if I put y is equal to 0 in 1, y is equal to 0 in 1. So I will get f of x square plus f of 0 is equal to 0 plus f of x whole square, right? Correct. So I am getting this f of x square plus f of 0 is equal to f of x whole square. And we can put minus x for x here and we'll get f of x squared plus f of zero is equal to f of minus x whole square and that shows us that f of x is equal to f of x no f of x square is equal to f of minus x whole square so what i can do here is put basically instead of x in this equation, I can put a, right? So I can say f of a square plus f of zero is equal to f of minus a whole square. So can I say now that I want to say that, I want to show that A is zero. 
that is my claim. If on only if a is zero. So let's think about it. What I have here is Okay, okay, I got it. So, so far, I'll just drop off this part. Uh, so far, I have gotten I got this equation, right? I got this equation by putting y is 0, right? And I got this equation by putting minus x for x, right? So from here, I can easily say f of minus x whole square is equal to f of x whole square, right? I'm getting this, right? So now if I put x is equal to a here, that implies f of minus a whole square is equal to f of a whole square. But f of a whole square is 0 because f of a was 0, right? So therefore, we are getting that f of minus a is 0. Right from here, we are getting f of minus a is zero. Great, we will use that soon now. So let's see if I say x is zero and y is minus a in the original equation, x is zero and y is minus a. What will happen? You'll get f of minus a plus f of minus a is equal to minus 2a plus f of 0 whole square, right? Correct. So this becomes, we know f of minus a is 0. Therefore, this becomes f of minus a plus 0. So f of minus a, so 0 is equal to minus 2a plus f of 0 whole square. We are getting 0 is equal to minus 2a plus f of 0 whole square. So that means f of 0 whole square is equal to 2a, right? And if you recall earlier, when I had put x as 0 and y as a in the first equation, I had gotten the result 0 is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square. You can do that again and you will get this result. 0 is equal to 2a plus f of 0 whole square. So that time f of 0 whole square was coming out to be minus 2a and now it is coming out to be plus 2a, right? So basically a lot of manipulation, you put x as 0, y as a, First of all, we have assumed that there is an A for which f of A is zero. We have proved that there is such an A. And now we are doing different, different versions of it. We are putting X as zero, Y as A. We are putting X as zero, Y as minus A. We put this and we replaced X with minus X to get this, right? And then we later put X is equal to A here. So eventually we are able to achieve the fact that f of zero square is equal to minus two A and f of zero square is equal to two A which implies 2a is equal to minus 2a, which implies a is equal to 0. So the whole point was basically establishing claim 1. Claim 1 was saying that f of a is 0 only if a is 0, right? So using f of a is 0, we have now putting, by putting different, different values, we have established that a is coming as 0. So our claim 1 is true. So let's revisit what our function was. The functional equation was x squared plus y plus f of y is equal to 2y plus f of x whole square. We know that f of x is equal to x is a solution. We need to prove that it is the only solution. And what is the claim that we have proved? That f of a is 0 implies that a is 0. We have proved this, right? Great. Now, the second claim that I want to show is that f of x is odd. f of x is odd and f of x is greater than 0 when x is greater than 0. Why? Because our solution is an odd function and the solution satisfies these properties. So, I want to show that this property is true for whatever is the solution of this equation, the first equation, right? So, how do I do that? Again, we'll do it by multiple steps. We'll say first step is put y is equal to 0 in 1. Put y is equal to 0 in 1. So then we'll get f of x squared plus f of 0. 
Now f of zero is zero, right? So from here we have already from claim one, we know that f of zero is zero, right? f of a is zero implies a is zero. So f of zero is zero. So this becomes x squared plus zero is equal to f of x square because we are putting y as zero, right? So we are getting this nice result that f of x square is equal to f of x whole square, right? This is an important result. This implies that this proves that f of x is greater than zero when x is greater than zero. Why do you think this proves that f of x is greater than zero for x is greater than zero? Because for any x that is positive, any positive x, it can be written as a square of some y, right? Can be written as y square, some y square. X is equal to some y square. For any positive number, we can write it as a square of something. So therefore, f of y square basically will become f of y whole square, right? f of x is equal to f of y square is equal to f of y whole square. Now, f of y could be positive or negative, but for f of y whole square is always positive, right? So therefore, we have proved that f of x is greater than or equal to zero for all. And when x is greater than zero, it is positive, right? So one part of our claim two is already done. We have already shown that f of x is positive for x greater than zero, right? The second part of the claim is trying to show that it's an odd function, right? So let's put x and y as root alpha and minus half f of alpha, where alpha belongs to positive real. We are going to put x as root alpha and y as minus half root alpha, minus half f of alpha. Why? Because I want to simplify the right hand side. 2y will become minus f of alpha if I do that. Why have I chosen root alpha? Because there is an x square and stuff here, right? So if I do that in the original equation, you will realize it looks like f of alpha minus f alpha by two plus f of minus alpha f of alpha by two is equal to minus f of alpha plus f of root alpha whole square, right? Now, first of all, we'll simplify the right side. I have done nothing weird here. I've just put these values in the original functional equation, which is equation one. Now I'll simplify the right hand side here. F of root alpha whole square can be written as F of root alpha square. Why? Because of this property. This property has been established. So therefore F of root alpha whole square can be written as F of root alpha square, right? So that is equal to f of alpha. So f of alpha plus minus f of alpha, this side becomes zero, right? So we are getting f of alpha minus f of alpha by two plus f of minus f of alpha by two is equal to zero, right? And now keep in mind claim one. Claim one had said, that f of zero, f of a is zero implies a is zero, right? Now here we have f of something is zero, which implies this something inside is zero by claim one. So we get alpha minus f of alpha by two plus f of minus f of alpha by two is zero, right? This is very important. Now we will isolate here alpha, okay? So I will go to the next screen. I will say alpha is equal to f of alpha by two minus f of minus alpha f of alpha by two, right? Okay. Now I can write minus alpha is equal to minus f of alpha by two plus f of minus alpha f of alpha by two. And now I can take f of both sides, f of minus alpha is equal to basically f of minus f of alpha by two plus f of minus f of alpha by two. So this is my result. Keep this result in mind. 
and now choose x is equal to 0 and y is equal to minus f of alpha by 2 in 1. What is 1? 1 is the original functional equation. So if you put these values in the original functional equation, you will get f of minus f of alpha by 2 plus f of minus f of alpha by 2 is equal to minus of f of alpha, right? Why? Because the original functional equation was what? f of x squared plus y plus f of y. x squared plus y plus f of y is equal to 2y plus f of x whole square. So think about it. If I put x is equal to 0 in this it and y is equal to this, it will become like this. And f of y is f of this. This is matching. And you get 2y is minus f of alpha. And f of 0, if you put it to 0. So we are getting this result here, right? We are getting this result. Now notice that the result that we got earlier, this side is matching, right? This side is the same thing here, right? Can you see that these are matching? So therefore we have shown that f of minus alpha is equal to minus f of alpha, right? The question looks more complicated than it is. But uh, we are basically just doing, uh, substituting things that make our expression look simpler. So instead of, because it was x square and all, I put x as root alpha. Because it was y by 2 and all, I put as minus f alpha. 2y was there, so I put y as minus alpha by 2, minus f of alpha by 2 and so on. Right? So we have shown that f of minus alpha is equal to minus f of alpha. So now our claim 2 is done. Claim 2 is done that f is odd and f of x is greater than 0 for x greater than 0. So now I'll revisit my original equation. My original equation is this f of x squared plus y plus f of y is equal to 2y plus f of x whole square. And I have established, first of all, f of 0 is 0. And f of a is equal to 0 implies a is equal to 0. Second, f of x is odd. And f of x is greater than 0 for x greater than 0. And along the way, I have also proved things like f of x squared was equal to f of x whole square. We have proved this along the way while proving claim 1 and claim 2. Right Now, we want to say claim 3. This is the main idea. Claim 3 is basically that f of x is equal to x for all x greater than 0. We want to show that f of x must be equal to x for all x greater than 0. That is the solution of this functional equation. right? In order to prove this, let's see what we can do. So first of all, for any alpha, any alpha greater than 0. Let's put x as root alpha and y as minus alpha in the original equation. Right? If I do that, I get f of alpha minus alpha plus f of minus alpha is equal to minus 2 alpha plus f of root alpha whole square. Now think about it here. This is 0. And f of minus alpha is minus of f, f of alpha. Okay, I'll just keep it like this for now. f of minus alpha and outside there is an f, right? f of f of minus alpha is minus 2 alpha plus this thing. Using this property, we can say that this is equal to f of root alpha square, which is f of alpha, right? So I'm getting a nice result. I'm getting 2 alpha is equal to f of alpha minus f of f of minus alpha, right? Now, if you simplify this a little bit, this becomes f of alpha minus f of, this is an odd function. So this is minus of f of alpha. And this is also an odd function. So this becomes plus f of f of alpha. Think about it. It is an odd function. So anytime you have f of minus x, it can be written as minus f of x. So I have used that twice here to prove that 2 alpha is equal to this. 
right? So that is my result right now. Two alpha is equal to this. So now if I take an F on both sides here, if I take an F on both sides here, I will get F of two alpha is equal to F of F of alpha plus F of F of alpha, right? So I'll just write it here. See, I will write it like this. F of two alpha should be equal to F of F of alpha plus F of F of alpha, right? Great. Now in this relation, if we put, okay, I'll keep this relation for now. This is relation number three. And what I want to do is put X is equal to zero and Y is equal to F alpha in one. X is equal to zero and Y is equal to F of alpha. So I will get F of F of alpha plus F of F of alpha is equal to two times F of alpha plus F of zero is zero, right? So can you see here that this left-hand side matches the right-hand side of three, right? So therefore, this is equal to this. Therefore, F of two alpha is equal to two times F of alpha, right? We have established that F of two alpha is equal to two times F of alpha. This is our fourth result, right? Great. Once we do that, now we are at the last step now. So what we will say is we will put x is equal to root of 2 alpha. Put x is equal to root of 2 alpha and y is equal to minus alpha in 1. If you do that, what will you get here? You will get f of root of 2 alpha square. So 2 alpha minus alpha plus f of minus alpha is equal to 2 times minus alpha plus f of root of 2 alpha whole square, right? So this becomes f of alpha here minus f of alpha, right? Alpha minus f of alpha is equal to here we get minus 2 alpha. And here, using this property again, you will get f of 2 alpha because f of root 2 alpha whole square will become f of 2 alpha. And that is equal to minus 2 alpha plus using 4, we will get 2 times f of alpha, right? So you have f of alpha minus f of alpha is equal to this, right? So now we are nearly there. What we will say is, let's say that, f of alpha minus f of alpha is equal to, if I take a minus two common, it is alpha minus f of alpha, right? Correct. So we will assume, assume, that beta is equal to alpha minus f of alpha. So then we are getting f of beta is equal to minus of two beta, right? Correct. We are getting f of beta is equal to minus of two beta. If you are assuming alpha beta to be alpha minus f of alpha, right? Now let's take the cases. This beta can be greater than zero. If beta is greater than zero, right? Then what we are getting is f of beta is less than zero. Can you see that if beta is greater than zero from here, we are getting f of beta is less than zero. But remember the claim two, we had proved that f of x is positive for x positive, right? So if beta is positive, f of beta should be greater than zero. So we are getting a contradiction, right? And if beta is less than zero, correct? If beta is less than zero, then beta can be written as minus gamma, where gamma is positive, right? So then f of beta is equal to f of minus gamma, which is minus of f of gamma. And since gamma is positive, this should be negative, right? Since gamma is positive, f of gamma should be positive and minus f of gamma should be negative. But from here, we are getting this is equal to minus 2 beta, but beta is less than 0, so minus 2 beta is positive. 
So again, there is a contradiction. So we are getting a contradiction for the two cases when beta is less than zero and beta is greater than zero, which proves that beta must be equal to zero, which proves that f of alpha must be alpha. Right? And if f of alpha, f of alpha is equal to alpha, our function has a solution f of x is equal to x. Using the fact that f of claim three has now been proved, f of x is equal to x, and using the fact that claim one and claim two together, it proves us proves to us that there is no other solution other than f of x is equal to x. This is the only case that is satisfied, right? Otherwise, f of x cannot be basically greater than x and also cannot be less than x, must be equal to x. So I hope you have learned something from this proof. Obviously, in an exam, in an Olympiad exam, you will probably uh, have to do these things much faster. We took a lot of time doing this, but I just wanted you to understand the techniques by which we are doing the proof. We are making claims, and for each claim, we are using different, different inputs to our in initial functional equation, and we are trying to establish it. So it will come with experience. You will be also able to think of what to do. But keep in mind that at any stage, we were always putting stuff that was simplifying the expressions. We were putting root alpha minus alpha in order to simplify the whole functional equation. Hopefully you learned something from the video and the proof. Uh, and we'll come back in the next video, which will be a continuation of functional equations. But we'll look at more problems and definite techniques there. Right? See you next time.